coffee farm. So this is these are the flowers, yeah. leaves, and the coffee plant and, and growth. Yeah. These are the developing tiny little beans starting to develop. They would be green at this stage. And as we move around here, these are the ripening cherries. These are the pulped cherries, which are going onto drying racks. Still a bit bigger. I mean, the description here is great. So as they dry, they shrink. Mm -hmm. says that there's moisture content. And after they stay in parchment for couple of months and after parchment they get hulled mm -hmm. so this is them after being hulled so they lose that few layers of skin and parchment so they're smaller there and then this is them roasted expanding a bit again this is them ground and being brewed gathered more cherries. Oh yeah? Yeah, definitely. You could tell by the density of the cover of the bottom, but all of that... So cover, how much have we picked in total? Well, all four of us have picked 9.8 9 kilos. Oh, that's nice. Hello everyone, uh, we are here in Picarau Hills near uh, Lake Ohia um, and we are actually on a coffee farm which is quite exciting. We've already had an amazing tour of it and Rob will answer our silly questions. Do you want to start Alice? So if you could start by just telling us a little bit about your farm and your business. The farm as such as he has evolved from an interest in coffee. It's a type of project that has added value to my whole experience with coffee. Initially we were just vending coffee at markets yeah. as, as a part of our income. Um, then a few years after we started that we started roasting coffee which became primarily a business um, and then um, basically having a piece of land here mm. and wanting to do something with it, it led on into that, mm. growing coffee as like, is it possible? Mm, yeah. can, can we do this? And so and we started, is. yeah, we started out, with, <laughs> we started out with um, planting about a hundred plants out mm. and just continued and they were varietals which have been here in New Zealand mm -hmm. for probably the late 70s. Mm. The, Department of uh, Science, Scientific Research, Agricultural mm -hmm. Scientific Research, done quite a lot of experimental projects with um, subtropicals and different vari varieties of plants, and coffee was included in that. I don't know how much success they had, but they did do a trial planting with coffee. Okay, um, so, so you're, it's not quite a pioneering work, but still. They only plant. They only had a few coffees planted, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, and right. it was shortly after abandoned. Okay. So there has there has been a few nurseries maintaining stock of coffee. Mm -hmm. 
since then and we um, got our hands on some of those original plants planted them out and that was a part of the first trial mm -hmm. of growing coffee yeah um, since then we have replaced um, those varietals with a more reliable um, coffee varietal called the Bourbon Point 2 Leroy, mm -hmm. which I've showed you today, and yeah. that's having a better bean set. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty excited about it. It's one of the rarest coffees. It's very delicious. It's I've tried the cherries. <laughs> 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 and hopefully we'll try the, the coffee beans as well. So that's only a few weeks off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, we'll be on it, trust yeah. me. Yeah. We're certain alarm Farm on alive. our phones. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah, you get an email. Yeah. So, so how many plants have you got now? Because we've seen um, the baby there, ones and the big ones. Yeah, there is about 230, 200, sorry, yeah, 230, 240 of the original plants yeah. that we sourced from New Caledonia as seed, and they're the ones that we picked today. Yeah. Yeah. So um, from that, from those plants, we've collected the seed mm. from the best plants, yeah. germinated that, and we probably will end up with around 1,000 plants. Wow. Uh, on the on the property, which is going to be more than enough to look after. I mean, yeah. coffee, co you know, you've had a little taste of coffee mm. picking. Yeah. We pick 10 kilos in, what, an hour and a half? Yeah. yeah. So it's fairly labor intensive. Yeah. It is. And there's a lot to it, as you've kind of found oh, out today. And that's only the picking. That's the not beginning even of it. The, yeah. yeah. That's, so, that's probably yeah, the easiest bit of we're it. We're kind of hustling coffee around for at least a couple of months yeah. mm -hmm. from the picking through the drying process. Um, and then there's the grading, um, hulling, roasting, Coffee. packaging. You know, okay. of yeah. course, that's that's the real, that's so the most exciting. exciting part. Yeah, <laughs> I really to, hope to, we to, will to will get the chance to come here oh, a little yeah. bit for a little bit longer because I would, we would definitely enjoy it. Oh yeah, if if you'll have us back, you never know. Yeah, so you started know. off. Of course, we'll have you back. Yeah. But you're Correct. you're gonna Correct. you're gonna be woofers next time you come exactly. back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. I'm so sorry. I'm freezing my my job. job. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to be a woofer. You, you've got we a have yeah. To have that experience. A coffee emergency happening. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you're emerging into something of coffee. Oh, I like what you did there with the wordplay. Very <laughs> nice. Speaking of wordplay, because I love this story. Can you explain the um, how you came up with the name of Icarus. Exactly, I forgot farm. to say that the farm that we are on is called Icarus. Yeah. And it would be nice. I to kind of it. like to call it Picaro Hills Coffee Farm. Oh. Okay. Because that's that's the, the kind of yeah, location orientation. Mm. Ah. Um so and I, the roaster the roasting yeah, business sorry. is called Icarus Coffee. There you go. So I haven't kind of amalgamated that at this mm -hmm. point. Um, right. Icarus came about because we had an interest in Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, Icarus is kind of a quirky character um, that essentially was imprisoned mm -hmm. and you could say the whole the Icarus's story is about liberation about freedom from imprisonment mm -hmm. and he attached feathers to himself with wax and mm -hmm. flew unfortunately got too close to the sun he was warned not to and uh, the wax melted and he plunged into the Icarian Sea mm -hmm. named after him we've we found it kind of appropriate that Icarus or the name has to do with the process of transformation, mm -hmm. heat and air, mm -hmm. and so it kind of worked. It's been an opening project in that there is nothing defined. Mm -hmm. There is no model to base it upon. Coffee's not grown here in New Zealand. It's, yeah. it's kind of quite a new concept. Yeah. We're not even sure ourselves how sustainable long term it is. Um, only time will tell. Yeah. But it has. There's been a lot of definitions, and as far as how can we manage this and mm -hmm. and it's an ongoing question of uncertainty, the mm. whole project. Well, we really hope that it will have a positive outcome. Yeah. Hopefully this will be a success. Or it's, yeah. I, think, I think it already is a success. I'm, I'm pretty excited with the, with the Bourbon Point 2 Leroy, Leroy varietal. Mm. I mean, it, has, it is showing that it has reasonable bean set. This was um, not a good summer. We're in the most extreme drought that mm. we've experienced on record. Mm. which is probably the last 80 or 90 years. Wow. So the plants are not dead. Yeah. They have survived it. And the coffee as such was affected by the drought. It's mm. a little smaller than it has been. Mm -hmm. There's a few more defects um, just based on lack of water. They haven't yeah. been able to, the beans haven't been able to form quite as well as they normally would have. Mm -hmm. 
So, but as the trees mature, they'll be more resilient mm -hmm. and more capable of handling extreme, extreme conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You also um, roast and um, sort of source other beans. Yeah which is amazing so hopefully we can we can leave with one bag ourselves now we you have can tell you can leave with as many bags, kilos as, as you like as many as we can you, afford you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but there is a question that we usually ask for from like coffee connoisseurs could you give us a bean that you wouldn't think we would enjoy as much or something that is not mm, not popular but if you were to think of a wild card that not like a, you know would surprise us what like would it be the marmite or the vegemite of the coffee word yeah. well I, was, I i would say that the bourbon point to leroy yes. is unique in the cup it's one of the most sought after coffees based on based on Amazing. its history mm -hmm. yeah. i mean it goes back to 1771 when it was first discovered and it has a long and lengthy history, mm -hmm. um, particularly in Europe. It's quite sought after, and now in Japan. So, yeah, okay. The proof is in the cup. I mean, there is, there is no one particular coffee that I would say is amazing. Yeah. There is a range of coffees that are processed in many different ways mm. that are amazing. Yeah. Uh, particularly the producers that are spending more time in the processing techniques of, of creating an, a natural or extended fermentation or a honey process mm. and that's that's creating some amazing mm. taste profiles and yeah. mm. the more out of the usual coffee experience mm. so these small parcels are becoming more accessible and the whole process of coffee development is hap is happening now mm. it, it it isn't flux if that's the right word yeah um, farmers are paying more attention to the value of what they are producing mm. and how they can produce it to raise the value of that coffee yeah. for consumers as an end result. Yeah. yeah. So that gives them a better income. Um, it becomes more sustainable. It becomes more traceable if it's a direct trade situation. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having some, well, I'm having some coffee which is directly traded with farmers. And it's a lot more important. rewarding for the farmer as well. They get I think to know that there is appreciation for what it is that they're doing, especially if they can experience it. Yeah. If, yeah. They, if they can have that cupping experience and they know what it is that they are producing, yeah. it's adding another dimension mm. to the to what it is that they're doing. I mean, so many producers wouldn't know what a flat white or a yeah, latte yeah. are. I've never exactly. had an espresso coffee. But that's changing. Yeah. You know, there are there are Which those. Which is right, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's crazy to think that you spend, you devote your life, to, yeah, your life to something, and you don't really get to benefit from it truly. Well, you get paid, but yeah, yeah. oftentimes not the way they, you they, should be paid. But, uh, yeah. They get two two percent of of I what is uh, the value of mm. the end cup, yeah. essentially. Um, if you know, it's not and, the best and, story. and essentially, mm. that's a little bit of a a sad outcome for, for yeah. the producers. But hopefully it will change as consumers start valuing transparency and fair trade. Because it's the same thing, right? It's the, the end of the, the, the other side of the whole story is that the person who goes in and just nonchalantly orders her everyday morning coffee doesn't know what goes on on the other end of the, the, the coffee journey right they don't know yeah. what producers go through they have they probably don't even know what that coffee bean is yeah um so i think it's it's true on both sides and that's why it's so important to have yeah. traceability to go in to to have more visibility as well um with all these amazing people who go into specialty coffee and are very visit visi visibility of the financial transactions that are mm. happening and who's taking what percentage yeah, yeah exactly. that's that's coming into line as well mm. which is great for the farmer yeah. yeah you know because it's the second largest traded commodity on the planet mm -hmm. and uh, 25 million coffee farmers yeah. globally most are only on the fringe of survival mm. yeah is the first one cocoa or is it some sort of drug oil oil yeah. of course oil oil yeah why, why yeah. do i never think about oil I mean, if it's that's why it's, I came on a bus. Is that done by kind of weight, or is that done by amount of money? I wonder. 
So if it's amount of money, surely like heroin would probably be up. There. I don't know a lot about the, the, <laughs> the intri- intricacy of it, but definitely the New York Stock Exchange has a massive yeah. Yeah. play in the, mm. Mm. in the value of it, yeah, it does. unfortunately. Just to change tack away from economics and the slightly depressing topic that that is, to what you were talking about, the um, producers starting to actually drink the cups and have a chance to um, practice cupping. In terms of flavours and kind of notes in coffee, what do you think is the most exciting or surprising note that you've ever picked up, picked up when you drank a coffee? Not one that's written on, but one that you taste and go, wow, that really tastes like... My favourite one is when I tasted green, af- like proper Granny Smith green apple. And I remember, I will never forget that experience. The barista was laughing yeah. out loud. He was like, I know, right? It's crazy. It's not just coffee. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of subtleties going on like that, a lot of fruit associations. I mean, it, it, it's very engaging, mm. Yeah. you know, to, to taste, to yeah. have that mm. experience. And to we're all taste perceptive. Mm, yeah. So we're all picking up slightly. We have a, a, a general affiliation yeah. Yeah, of exactly. taste, but I think we all perceive taste slightly differently. Different, yeah. And you know, it, that's what it ma- makes it interesting. Yeah. I suppose for me, um, I'm always liking cocoa. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. do find often that cocoa is coming in different notes of, yeah. of a dark cocoa or a milk cocoa or yeah. you know like a 30 percent cocoa or, yeah. or this is a real intense cocoa experience yeah. you know like a dark chocolate experience mm-hmm. um yeah i like the sort of dried fruit characters like mm-hmm. a marmalade mm-hmm. or something like yeah dried dried fruits yeah just recently i i said that i tasted um like a uh, apricot jam, apricot apricot jam. jam. Yep. Yeah. which was funny because wasn't that the one where I tasted it and I got an overwhelming taste of cinnamon? cinnamon. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. That was very. And interesting. that was actually on the packet, so it wasn't just me being crazy. Okay. But that that's the only it. thing I've ever picked up in coffee. So. You, you might, you might find with the bourbon point too. You pick up on apricot. That's quite Ooh. a standout. Oh wow. Character. A little oh, bit of wait. vanilla, cocoa, apricot, mm. maybe rhubarb, stuff like that. Mm. Oh wow. I feel like I could get on that like mailing an exciting list. kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you got a question in mind? I've got an easier question. Uh, filter or espresso? I think they're both relevant. Yeah. Mm. I like them both. Yeah. I mean, you might feel like a flat white first thing in the morning, right? Oh, yes. That's yeah. That's got to be an yeah. espresso. You can't mm. make a flat white out of a filter. No. Mm. So later in the day, you might feel like a filter. So yeah. why not? Just both. do mm. them both. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I agree. I and, agree. And maybe some, maybe a cold drip on a hot day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you tried cold drip? Oh yes. yeah, cold yeah. brew yeah. and yeah. nitro. We yeah. tried it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, there's there's a lot of different brew techniques. Oh yeah, so, yeah. it's amazing. It's yeah. an amazing world. My personal question, please don't be offended, is who is your favourite person to drink coffee with? Oh, my favourite particular person would have to be Carol. Okay, yeah. well, that's very sweet. That's lovely. Makes sense as well. <laughs> yeah, it does. Since you made it together. For that's me, coffee comes with cake or croissant. What about okay. you? Do that you, sounds I, quite European. Yeah, Because we, we went on a, like a coffee... <laughs> not anymore, she's not your a, a coffee explorer. <laughs> we we, 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 we don't thought don't we'd mention. go to... When we were in Vienna, yeah. we thought we'd do a coffee exploration there of cafes, and we got yeah. some really good, well, a lot of recommendations, and we explored a lot. Mm. It was always coffee and cake. Mm. The coffee was to fi- forget about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The cake was to die for. <laughs> Although Vienna is, I mean, it's one of the capitals of, you know, coffee. Coffee, that, coffee yeah. that was the, the first, first point yeah. in Europe where coffee arrived. Mm. Do you know how it arrived there? Uh, th- from Yemen. And it was British, like, travellers. No. Was it French? Was it no. Like? No, Vienna was under siege from the Turks during oh, the wow. Ottoman okay. rule. Oh, wow. That and um, the city was surrounded for many months. Mm-hmm. And they held out anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Polish army eventually arrived and the Turks fled. Wow. And they left behind all these coffees. Sex. Oh, amazing. So, um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, some that a it was young, an accident. Young, yeah, it was an accident. Mm. Actually, they just left them behind. Yeah, well. For their coffee supplies, and some young Viennese entrepreneur decided to 
collect up all these coffee bags and roast them and that's how the coffee culture started in Vienna. So they mixed it with milk. The Turks would have drunk it Turkish style. Yeah. yeah. And the Viennese created the latte. Cappuccino, the cappuccino yeah. and the lattes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, there's a misconception about you know cappuccinos being an Italian drink. They're it not, is. They're, I think cappuccino is based on the origin of the cappuccino monk. Yeah. In, I mean the, in yes. Rome. Yeah. But I think because the cappuccino monk, if you if you look the at the color how of their they yes. they're it's a big Rope. hooded brown robe yeah yes. Yes. so naturally when you sprinkle something on the top it's a cap cappuccino right yes cappuccino. I, I do based on that i think yeah. that's the, the etymology probably the name yes. yes was probably from italy but so many people say that the viennese like the the people in austria were making the the foamy drink already which wasn't necessarily in the lot it was more of a dark shot and then just a lot of like steam foam milk on, on top and despite the fact they didn't call it cappuccino it was already probably cappuccino but the yeah. Italians sprinkled a little bit of yeah, butter on top exactly. and they called That's it the and, and they take the <laughs> credit it's more of a political question but how do you think your coffee farm and your roastery um, helps the environment and animals including humans well I think, as we've discussed, coffee is a social drink, mm. brings people together. That's a it's, very good it's, point. It's quite connective. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, it also has a lot of health benefits. Mm. Yeah. So it does. Th you're actually the second person who brought that up, yeah. which is yeah. quite amazing. So it's 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 high in antioxidants. Mm. Um, the cascara, the coffee chew skin that mm -hmm. we dry. Um, is high in antioxidants and polyphenols. The leaf is high in, mag in magnificin. Yeah, it I learned that today. Co coffee is such as a superfood. Yeah. yeah. And it there's, there, there is experimentation going on with the cherry skin as well as the leaves um, for, for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about that, but mm -hmm. it's kind of in development for mm. creams for the skin, etc. Yeah. So it's good for dementia, diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, yeah. Alzheimer's all that, all that Parkinson's, yep. all mm. those types of things. Uh, for for your physicality, yep. um, everything in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. And this leads up to the next next question. All three of us love coffee. We know that. If you were to think of one negative thing about coffee, it can be you can think of anything from the plant to the cup. What would it? What would that be? That the producers are not getting a fair deal. Oh, that's yeah. Such a good note to end this video on. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, I, I just think that you know, if more. there is more traceability, transparency in the whole chain mm -hmm. yeah. to the cup. Yeah. Thank you very much for okay. This was nice an amazing. You, thanks. Day. Yeah, it's it been, was been really um, enjoyable having you around. Well, thanks for helping pick. Oh, oh, I mean, talk yeah. about transparency. I mean, we, we, yeah. We've seen the whole, every single stage of the process right here. Yeah, it was amazing. Met yeah. a producer who's also a roaster and also a distributor. Yeah. All of the above. And then a barista because he made us a cup of coffee. Yeah, a really nice one. <laughs> Not just coffee, cascara as well. Thank you very much. I hope we can come back again. Yeah. <laughs>